Hello everybody. So um, I wanted to do a quick video on my one-to-one -one scale uh, German tool clamps that I'm selling over on Gumroad, the STL file. And I'm just going to show how they come together. This is all using the Elegoo Neptune 2, which I will talk a little bit about and kind of discuss why I recommend it. So the Neptune 2 is a standard i3 FDM printer. It's currently running at about the cheapest price you can get any of them for. I think it was 180 somewhere around there. And the reason I recommend it is that everything sticks to the bed every time. If you've never done FDM printing, that's a good thing. Um, and it's incredibly simple. So I won't bore you with like a ton of 3D printer stuff, but everything I do on this thing works when I try it. And then I have had a number of FDM machines that did not do that. So if you're ever at all interested in these sort of large scale hobby projects, like I like to make one-to-one -one scale tank parts, um, this thing does what it's supposed to do every time, and I love that. So if you buy my STLs, well, it's a zip file with all of them in there. So the tool clamp comes in. This is how it'll print off the bed, this way up. So it'll print like this. That is the what I call the band. This is how the handle prints and these are the support areas for it so it prints on the bed like that this is how the base prints so it's a little piece of it would wouldn't come off the bed without um, separating and that's a good thing when you're printing it but not a good thing when you're trying to show people and i do have some footage of the printer in action doing this project but uh, it's not terribly important for you to watch every piece get printed more so the orientations and in my stl um, I have images and directions for how to have the orientation of each object when you're printing it and images that I will be adding soon. I sent them to a museum that I, I gave the file to, but they're not currently in the um, zip. But that's how this one prints. And then the only other piece we would have in FDM this time around is the band leather, which is this. There was a little bit of support here, but that would not come off separately. So it's a great thing when you want to rip things off the bed. Um, and they won't come off, but uh, not for, again, this. So the pins for this particular one, we're going to use resin. So these were printed on my Elegumars 2 Pro. You have to orient things very differently. Now, I don't have these pre-supported in my STL. It's just a normal STL file of the pins. And I have printed these in FDM. They don't come out great. I prefer them in resin because of the way that they're incredibly smooth. And you'll see in a second why that's important. So when you get this guy off the bed, you just pop this stuff off. And now there's a little bit of what I call, or what, there's a little bit of what they call stringing here. So you can see right here where it sort of strings back and forth. Now how I normally deal with this is you can kind of just pull at it. And then normally what you want to do once you get it kind of cleared up like that is go in there with a sander. I'm not going to worry about doing it 100% in this. But so there's a tiny bit of, of stringing, I'll be honest, every time I do this print on any machines. But it's not the end of the world. You just get basically a couple of these like little hairs. And if you sand them off, they won't be there. Okay, so that's good enough for me at the moment. So um, one thing I'll mention about this, if anybody's interested in it, is this is printed with a 100% infill. 100% infill is only used on this piece because um, these break. If you know anything about infill, it's, you know, how much of the uh, model is solid plastic and, and how much of it is like a little crisscross pattern inside to maintain stability. My lights might make it so you can see through this one. I don't know. But this has, these are all 20% infill, whereas this piece alone is just 100 because this little bar breaks. Your second piece would be this guy. Again, you just pop this off. And then this middle guy, pop him off. These little guys that are in the screw holes are a little bit more complicated, but not really. You've got to push them from behind like that. So now we've got our base. This is the handle. So I just peel him off of that. And then again, we've got these four holes that are a little bit harder to push out. Those are totally the hardest to get out of all of these. Um, if you're interested in this, but you don't know a lot about 3D printing, there's lots of other people who I can direct you at. 
Um, how easy these things are to remove has to do with uh, what they call a Z gap. Basically, how much um, how much of a gap is left in between support material and like your actual model. Uh, since this is not a 3D printing channel, I'm not going to get into it. But again, if you ask me, I can either tell you or point you at people that don't do know. Um, I do have a little bit of issue with this guy because of the way he's supported. You can see here he's got some kind of flashy bits, so I normally will sand these down a little bit to to get them a little more smooth. Nothing huge. Okay, so we have this guy who came perfectly, this guy, this guy, this guy. Now my resin pins. As you can see, there's quite a few supports there, but I just pull them off. It's actually a lot, lot easier than the FDM parts. They don't need to be sanded or anything. There might be a teensy bit. Sorry about the lighting. I don't have my normal lights up today. There might be a teensy bit of imperfection. See right there, it's where the support's connected. You can sand that if you want. I find that for this project, it doesn't really matter. All right, so assembly, the main reason I want to make the video. You take your two parts here. I'm going to feed this guy into the little fork. Just push him down there. And it's pretty simple. You just line these two holes up with the hole in this part and this part, like so. Now I'm going to go with the male end of my pins on the bottom, just so that I remember, because there's a male and a female end of these pins. Basically, they do this, and this collapses and then re-expands once it's through. So one. Two. Now he's through. And I put this guy in. And I'll put this guy in as well. So if you can see from there, there's like a kind of a gap because of that. And I just push them together. Snaps. And then our clamp functions. And then the last part, this leather piece, is just friction fit. There's a hole that I modeled in there. I just push them in. And now this other piece of leather was molded in there. That one's there. That is your tool clamp, but in one-to-one. -one, so you have some form frame of reference for what they actually are supposed to look like. And you can hang things with it or hold them, whatever you want to do. I think these are fantastic, um, obviously, since I'm the guy obsessed with tool clamps. I just wanted to show people how they go together. Um, it's five bucks on Gumroad. Um, again, if people are interested in getting one that's pre-assembled, um, I'm willing to hear opinions if that's of interest to anybody. I'm not going to just sell them like on Etsy or something, but if you're interested, let me know.